National Broadcasting Company present, transcribed, Sir Ralph Richardson, your host in Theatre Royal. This is Ralph Richardson. Today for our play, we are turning to a famous book, Vanity Fair, by William Thackeray. In this masterpiece, Thackeray created one of the most exasperating and endearing of all feminine characters, Becky Sharp. To play the role of Becky Sharp is my guest, a charming English actress who I expect will be familiar to many of you through the films in which she has appeared. Margaret Lockwood. Here then is Margaret Lockwood in some sequences from Vanity Fair, which we have called Becky Sharp. laid in a Brussels hotel in the momentous year 1815. Outside in the Belgian capital, all is excitement and dancing, music and revelry. The feasting which comes before the farewells. For this is the evening of June the 16th, two days before the Battle of Waterloo. Two young British officers are just returning from a ball with their ladies. George Osborne, a rather wild, impulsive young man with his demure wife, Amelia, Rawdon Crawley, a hardened dandy with a dreadful reputation among the ladies, and his wife, the ex-governess and notorious beauty, Becky Sharp. Come in, Amelia, my sweetest. Come in. Why not, Osborne? Do come in, dear fellow. It is so late, Captain Crawley. <laughs> Nonsense. It's early morning. Morning is never late. Late? On such a night as this, there is no such word as late. Oh, the ball. That perfect, perfect ball. I've danced till I'm exalted. Yes, you triumphed, Becky. I... You preferred not to dance. Had you shown inclination to dance, you would have danced as much as I. Some women had to refuse partners. Others don't attract them. George. Oh, look at her. No diamonds, no no bouquet. You did not buy me one. It's true, her dress is not very distinguished, George. You must send her to my corsetier. I'll give you the address. It takes you to know what clothes are, Mrs. Crawley. Lord, your partner's. Lord Barrycus, General Tufto, and... And you, Captain Osborne. I saw the Duke smile at you. The Duke? I must go to bed. Oh, ridiculous, Mrs. Osborne. Why, George and I have... No, Rawdon. No gambling in my drawing room, if you please. You naughty men. I owe Osborne his revenge. By gad, he does. And everything succeeds with me tonight, too. I've been to the Duchess Ball. I've danced with Becky. I I forbid cards in my room, Captain Osborne. And you are smoking, sir. Upon my word, I forgot. I forget everything tonight. Don't throw it away. Downstairs, you can smoke with Rawdon. Yes, I'd like a weed. Come along, Osborne. Amelia. Oh, you poor dear. How tired you look. Tired? Yes, dear. I know you're not used to late hours, but... I could not let you go to bed without warning you. Warning me? You? Oh, my dearest, do sit down. You must listen to your Rebecca. You must. For God's sake, child, stop your husband's gambling or he will ruin himself. He and Rawdon are at cards every night. Why don't you prevent it, you little careless creature? Why don't you come to us of an evening when you could exercise some control? Could I? Well, I hope so. Would you let me? I let you? Rebecca, did I ever do you anything but kindness? Indeed, no. 
That is why I'm so anxious to do you a kindness now. By coming between my husband and me? By separating those whom God hath joined and taking my darling's heart from me? Oh, heavens! This is injustice. George has a weakness for play. I dare to mention it, and you insinuate the most cruel things. Oh, Amelia. What have I done to you that you should try to take him from me? I? Do I want him? What qualities has he that I should find attractive? True, he has heavenly feet. He danced divinely tonight, did he not? How should I know? He did not dance with me, his wife. Dearest, isn't that just what I warn you of? Do you think I couldn't see it for myself? My dear, you can't. You don't. He danced with me, but why? Not for my sake. Not because he admires me. It isn't I who attract him. It's my husband and those wicked, wicked cards. That is why George is amiable. Not to me. Not to your Rebecca. He is amiable to the wife of Captain Crawley because he wants to go on playing cards with Captain Crawley and you do nothing to prevent it. Listen, Amelia. It isn't enough to have married a man. We women have to hold our husbands by what poor arts we can. Take your dress tonight. Would George have danced with me if your dress had compelled attention? But my child, it's dowdy. Oh, it's positively dowdy. And the reason? George is too busy losing his guineas to my husband to have any to spare for your dressmakers. Don't you see how it all belongs together? How it is all, all George's passion for cards. Yet you deliberately sent them to play cards now. Oh, the injury you do me. I sent them. I, who forbade card playing in my room. My dear, my husband's weak. God forbid that I should speak an ill word of my warden. But he is weak. He's always to be tempted. George tempts him and you will not prevent it. Amelia, do, do make an effort to prevent it. You've only been married six weeks to George. Surely your hold on him is strong. And when we are at war, when our husbands are both about to march away and may not come back... Oh, Becky! There. there. They will return. Your... Your brother is still in Brussels. Dear Mr. Joseph. In this hotel. So near. Oh, what a comfort he will be to us when our husbands are away. We weak women need a protector. I, I think you have offended, Joseph. I? Impossible. I have the greatest regard for him. When he is in the same hotel and you did not know it? My society has been so military. Oh, your grand friends. Too high for... Becky! That means... Yes. Yes. Amelia, I've searched everywhere and I find you here. Your servant, Mrs. Crawley. Ah, dear, Mr. Joseph. You heard the bugles? Yes. I'd word ten minutes since. They march at three. At three? Oh, heavens, it's half past two. Yes. Where's George? It's time With he... Captain Crawley. They will have heard... Oh, I envy them. I'd give the world to be a soldier now. I've half a mind... Joseph, when George must go, would you leave me too? Oh, I've seen a bit of service in India, you know. I've smelt powder Oh, and... don't desert me, Joseph. Oh, my dear creature, there's no danger. The Allies will finish Bonaparte and be in Paris in two months. I'll dine you at the Palais Royal by Joe. You don't know military affairs, my dear. We've got the Duke, haven't we? Listen. A bear. Why, there's a regiment marching now. Come over by the window. Look. Yes, that's the stride. Make mincemeat of them, my boys. Make mincemeat of them. It's the Duke. It's the Duke. Amelia, it's the Duke himself. Yes, Joseph. Oh, it's 
hard on a man. It's hard to be left behind. You would sacrifice anything for a pleasure? My dear madam, I only said I should like to go. I didn't say I was going. You have noble aspirations, Mr. Sedley. But the protectorship of weak women, is not that also noble? Gad, you're right. I mustn't let the inclinations get the better of me. I have my sister to care for. Yes, and if... If we have to fly, there would be a little corner for me in your coat. Oh, fly? Oh! Yes, madam. In the case of so outrageous an improbability, you shall have a corner in my coat. Oh. But to dream of such a thing is, is, is monstrous. Monstrous, madam, do you hear? It's, 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 it's un, un, un English. It's, it's... What is, Sedley? Something, sir, that I will not even mention before you gentlemen. George! Amelia, come, I must change. I must write to my father, and you... I will pray, George. Cut him some sandwiches while you play, pray, Mrs. Osborne. And put some brandy in his flask and make him some coffee to drink before we start. But I... That's good advice. Amy, come, my dear, come. Are you coming, Joseph? Uh, yes, George, I am. Uh, Crawley, you and I have differed. But there, man, there's my hand. Come through it sound, man. Come through it sound. I'll try. Fat elephant. Isn't he? Had you time to do anything with Osborne? Two hundred. Good. He played frantically and I let him. I was thinking of you. Of me? You'd better take the money now. But, Rawdon... My dear, we're marching. I'm a pretty good mark for a shot. Oh, no. Well, if I drop... You shan't. Look here, I'd like you to know this before I do. You've made life different for me. I've never been so happy as in the months of our marriage. What did I do before? Turf, ring, hunting, gambling. And I might as well say it now, women. Then I married you. And back lawful matrimony with you is the finest sport on earth. It's a bad thought for me that if I fall today, I don't leave you provided for. You won't fall, Rawdon. Well, let's see what there is for you. You've got Osmond's 200. Here's my pocketbook. Another... Yes, 30. Take all that, Becky. If I'm hit, you know I cost you nothing. <laughs> oh, don't cry, little woman. I may live to vex you. Now, the horses. I leave you two horses in the stables here. There's the key. Good cattle, too. Say, a hundred each. There's my dressing case in there. Cost me 200. <laughs> that is, I owe 200 for it. Pins, rings, watches, put them all up the spout, my dear. It's a poor lot, You're but... coming back. I'm going into battle, and it's no use blinking facts. I'll change these clothes for the shabbiest uniform I've got. You can sell these, and... Oh, Job, it's getting late. I must hurry. I must cut sandwiches and get brandy. I've brandy in there. Then sandwiches. You told Amelia. I gave the fool an occupation. You're sound of metal. Will you prove that? Rawdon, I'll do anything. It's a big thing. Becky, if I'm going to my death, I'd like to go with the sound of your playing in my ears. I'll leave the bedroom door open while I change. Then I can hear and see you. Becky, will you? Can you? Yes. For your sake. Ha, ha, ha. 
And so we continue the story of Becky Sharp. The scene is the same, the apartments of the Crawleys, but it is now two days later, on the evening of the day of Waterloo. Come in, Amelia, come in. Becky's not here, Joseph. She would surely have been here to receive us. I'm sure I don't oh, want... Oh, rubbish, Amelia. Look, there's the table laid for three. You stay where you're invited and where you accept it. You accepted? Did I? Well, I'm in charge of you. Do you think I want to dine with Becky Sharp? Yes. But I want to dine. I haven't had a spare meal since the troops marched away. Oh, oh Lord, she's off again. <laughs> there, there, there. It's stupid of me to have reminded you. But why can't you bear up better like Becky? I will try, Joseph. Yes, do. I've enough to worry me in a hotel full of caterwauling natives running around like frightened sheep. I'll undertake to say it would take more than a war to upset a good English inn as this place is upset. I can't get service, but Becky can. She speaks French so well. French? I swear at them in Hindustani and I can't get attention. No, Joseph. But then in Brussels they are not Hindus. They're Belgians. Lost all control of themselves because Boney's near. Where is Becky? I'm hungry. Ah, oh, there you are at last. Dear Mr. Media. Oh, Mr. Sedley. Your coat. My coat, madam. It's a very fine coat. But braided. It's like your moustache. So terrifyingly martial. <laughs> it needn't terrify you. But it does. It tells me you are going to join the army and leave us to our fate. No, 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 no. Ah, no. but I know it. You are bent on plunging into the frenzied scene. Oh, well, every man of spirit would. But my duty keeps me here. I am so greatly relieved. I thought you were deserting us just when our need of you is urgent. Urgent? That bell. Well? I ring, but no one answers. Oh, I will try again, but no one will come. You, uh, you mean the servants? But that table, that laid table. A whited sepulchre. They laid it, then ran into the streets for news. Is it not dreadful when I have guessed? There is no dinner? None. Good heaven. Shops. What? Shops are open, Mr. Joseph. Oh. But what can a woman do? I can't go into those maddened streets of Brussels and... And we women, we wives, we cry, but we cannot eat tears. See? Just below, there in the street, there's a shop open. I, I, I will go and see what I can do. Oh, what a thing it is to be a man. If it were only bread and cheese. Bread and cheese. And, and anything else you can procure. I have wine. Becky, you do not be agitated, dear Amelia. Joseph will feed the hungry. Yes, that is why you invited us. You knew the servants had deserted. When gentlemen take pleasure in obliging us, my sweet, it is our womanly duty to provide them with opportunities of serving us. Your womanly duty. Oh, you confess it. You are using him. Would you have us false to our husbands, Amelia? What? Did they not go away, happy in the knowledge that we were protected by the lion-hearted Mr. Joseph? Oh, Amelia, you who have father, mother, brother, all, what can you know? How should you judge of the necessities of a poor, friendless orphan to grudge me the little kindnesses of Mr. Joseph? It was ungenerous of him. You always put me in the wrong. My dearest friend thoughtlessly put herself in the wrong. Own that you were ungenerous, my darling. Yes. Ah. What's that? They are firing. Heaven defend us, it's cannon. Nearer. Much nearer than they were. A little wine, Amelia. <laughs> Bread and cheese. Oh, thank you, Mr. Joseph. Thank me. Good God, madam. The news in the patisserie. News? Joseph, what is it? Help me out with this coat, quick. Your coat? Frog, braided in the military fashion. So that people who did not look very closely might mistake you for a soldier, Mr. Joseph. With your military figure and your fierce moustache. The French and... have sworn not to give quarter to a single British soldier. I have it. Turn the coat inside out. Lord, what a brain you have. Save. Saved. Saved from what? What is the news? There was a Belgian hussar in the patisserie, fled from the field. The only man of his regiment, the rest, all slain. 
He told me the most terrible news. We must fly for our lives. Fly? The town's in a panic. They say the Duke's a prisoner. The Belgians ran. And, and... George! Had the man seen George? No, 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 no. But all's over, Annie. The French will be here in an hour. I won't stop to be butchered by a Frenchman. Come. Without my husband, Joseph? Don't you understand? The Allies are defeated. We must fly to Ghent and... and I and... shall await my husband. Alive or dead, he will come to me here. At Bonaparte! I am going to my room. Goodbye, then, and be... Mr. Joseph. Oh, I've no time for you. I'm, I'm going. Yes? But will you fly on wings? I've got my coach. And horses? And horses, Mr. Joseph? All of the horses are with the army. You'll have to walk. But then, you'll be quite safe now you've turned your coat. Walk? A man of my habit? Walk? I'd pay a hundred pounds for a horse. The people who have horses in Brussels tonight are few. Few and so very, very fortunate. Is not that always the case when an article is scarce and there are many eager purchasers? Are, are there horses at all? Uh, Becky, if you know of any, where? Where? Captain Raleigh happened to leave two behind. Rawdon? Oh, what foresight! We are saved! Dave, where are they? Locked in the stable of this hotel. Uh, and the key. Uh, quick, where, where's, the, where's the key? The key is where I have put it, Mr. Sedley. Uh, give it to me. I'll have them out at once. And, and, and Give, uh, Mr. Sedley? Give? Do you know I've just refused to sell to Lady Bearacres at 1,200? 1,200? Oh, you wanted them yourself. I'm not going. What? Not going? But, but the French are at the gates of Brussels. If they are, Mr. Sedley, I still don't go. If you trust to their sparing women, but, but I shall g get no quarter. I am a man. They will perceive it by your coat. Uh, Becky, Mrs. Crawley, have you thought what may happen to women when the dastardly and brutal French reach Brussels? Are you trying to frighten me? Mr. Sedley, it was once said of Becky Sharp that she couldn't be a born woman of fashion. Her French accent was too good. Well... Well? Oh, you pretend to be French? I should trust to God and to my taste in clothes, which is so unlike our dear Amelia. But, but the horses, for me. I mentioned that Lady Berwick has offered 1,200. 1,200 pounds for a pair of horses? Ah, oh, oh, but, but, but she died. I'll ride. Uh, one is enough for me. Both or neither, Mr. Sedley? 1,200 pounds. Pounds. That was what I had to refuse, even from a countess, in accordance with the commands of my dear husband. He ordered me not to part with them for less than 1,500. 1,500 pounds? I... Oh, I must sit down. Lad, what's that in the street? What is it? How the people run, all in one direction, all away from Bonaparte. 1,500 pounds. Oh. It is no doubt in your pocket. We all carry our wealth on our persons here, do we not? Becky, if you have any regard for me... I think the streets grow worse. Heavens, is that a French uniform I see? French? Oh, I can look no more. The horses, the horses. Give me the stable key. I sell it for 1500 Becky, I'll pay a thousand. You're, you're teasing, and there isn't time. I'm a monopolist of horses, Mr. Sedley. And I may be a widow at this moment. I must think of my future. Of course, if the French catch you, you your future... Oh, Becky, please, please. There, there, there's a thousand. I implore you on my knee. The key. Dear, sweet creature, take the thousand and give me the key. <gasps> what was that behind me? Whom are you beckoning to at the door? That, my dear Mr. Sedley, was someone else who knows I've got those horses. Shall I call him in? No, 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 don't do that. For God's sake, don't do that. There, see, I, 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 I'm getting out the other 500. I'll have this scarf pin, too. No, no, give it back to me. That's a diamond. It's oh, my... a souvenir of our bargain. Or shall I call the other gentleman? No, 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 no. Here are the notes. And here's the key. Oh, give it to me. Unscrupulous of expense. <laughs> All fair in war. Then what is to prevent my retaking my money? I'm stronger than you. Are you? We'll see. Gordon? Captain Crawley. No, sir. Colonel Crawley. Promoted on the field of victory. 
Victory, but I, 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 heard, I spoke to I have written with dispatches from the Duke, sir. The French are on the run from Waterloo. Rawdon, you're not hurt. Except by Mr. Sedley. Mr. Sedley, whom I find while we soldiers are away, forcing his foul attentions on my wife. No, no, no. I, I'll, I'll explain. It wasn't that at all. It was. Go, I, sir. I, go no, before but, I whip you. But, but I, Get out! <laughs> you hurt. Quite enough. We, we poor people have to live. Look. What? Fifteen hundred pounds? The price of your horses. <laughs> for Mr. Sedley to escape the French. Gad, Becky, you're wonderful. What a time we'll have in Paris. Out there was your victory, my colonel. This is mine. Kiss me. Mrs. Crawley, I do not consider you a nice woman. Oh, back again, Mr. Sedley? Of course I'm not a nice woman. I'm Becky Sharp. This is Ralph Richardson again. This week in our story, Becky Sharp, an adaptation of an incident from Thackeray's novel, Vanity Fair, our cast included Margaret Lockwood, whom you heard as Becky Sharp, together with Rex Garner as George Osborne, Joan Young as Amelia Osborne, Wilfred Babbage as Joseph Sedley, Robert Sampson as Rawdon Crawley. I look forward to the pleasure of our next meeting. Until then, au revoir and thank you. <laughs>